So this is a ripple tank and it allows us to show different wave behaviour. So I'm going to take you through uh, reflection, refraction and diffraction all by using this ripple tank here which is making waves on water. Gorilla physics! Yeah. So very simply what I've got is I've got a knob to adjust the frequency of the waves and I've got a knob to adjust the frequency of a strobe light and I've just synced that strobe light so the little light that you can see at the bottom is always turning on and off at the same as the frequency of the waves. Now it's going to look a bit funny occasionally because the camera it obviously has a frequency of its own but um, hopefully you can just see that flickering there and if I increase the frequency it flickers more often but also you can see the wave forms are changing. I'm going to turn the lights off now and see how that looks. So first let me demonstrate that the frequency is inversely proportional to the wavelength and if I increase the frequency you can see the wavelength decreasing. It's a crucial thing and that is because the wave speed equation is wave speed equals frequency times wavelength. The wave speed is fixed in there. In that depth of water, that piece of water in there, the wave speed is the same throughout. So higher frequency, shorter wavelength. Lower frequency, longer wavelength. So this demonstration, this piece of metal here, this curved piece of metal is going to demonstrate the law of reflection to you. So if I place it in there you can see now instead of just being those flat waves we can see it's reflecting from this curved piece of metal. They're actually all um, sort of adding up at this point here. They're all focusing, all these waves now are focusing on this center point here. And this is how a solar mirror or solar collector works. Well, how is that a demonstration of the law of reflection? Well, actually, if we can imagine we have loads and loads and loads of plane mirrors like making this curve here, and we imagine plotting our normals at all these different points, you can then see how the incident ray, which is always parallel, is reflecting off the mirror and always focusing here on this point here, so always parallel, always focusing here. So actually this is a very good demonstration for reflection. Now remember I said to you that the wave speed in this water is always the same. Well, it is always the same as long as the depth of the water is equal. So this little glass block, if I place it in there, is gonna mean it's shallower here than it is here. And so the water, is, the wave, the water wave is going to be a different speed here than it is here. And we can see the effect of that on our screen here. Can you just about see that the waves are all parallel here and then they actually are a different direction here. They're actually slightly skewed. And what's happening is as the wave speed is changing from here to here, it's actually refracting towards a normal. If you can imagine a right angle line there, then these waves are refracting towards a normal. The angle of incidence is greater than the angle of refraction. And why is that? It's because the wave is actually faster here than it is here. You've probably used the analogy of the car hitting the boundary, where one wheel slows down before the other, and so the car swerves and turns the corner. So these two glass blocks are actually um, to show us how lenses work. And although the water wave isn't traveling through this block, what it is doing is changing the depth of the water at certain points and you can hopefully see that this concave lens is actually diverging some of those uh, rays it's actually spreading out some of those water waves and you're getting this funny pattern after it it is it's not perfect and you'll do this probably with ray boxes in your class and i've got a video about those as well but you can just about hopefully link the idea so what is happening in a lens, the wave speed is changing as it goes through the lens and therefore it's doing refraction. Yeah, you can just see that there, the, the, almost like the rays are coming together after the, um, after the lens there. This is a converging lens, so it is bringing the light to focus sooner after the lens. So these two metal obstacles I can place into my tank to actually give me a gap. And you need to know the third wave behavior, we've done reflection, we've done refraction. The third wave behavior is diffraction. And diffraction means spreading out in all directions. 
And you pretty much, if you're just doing core science at the minute, you pretty much just need to know diffraction occurs when the gap size is roughly equal to the wavelength. So hopefully you can see that on the camera, that actually the waves are coming through, they're, they're parallel to one another, and then they, they are diffracting into this semicircular pattern. And if you have a very high frequency, well, you not get as much diffraction. You can see they're just pretty much going through parallel again there at that very high frequency. Okay, so there we go. And I can obviously change the gap size itself. Let me go in and make it a narrower gap. And now you can hopefully see that even at the higher frequencies, I'm still getting quite a lot of diffraction. That's a good one, look at that. A nice semicircular pattern after the gap. Now, if you were interested in why is that happening, well, it's easy to see that if you've only got one of the obstacles in, you see how we're actually getting a kind of quarter circle, quarter circular, I suppose, and that is because as the wave comes here, it is actually being slowed down by this barrier here. And the same analogy with it going through um, the car, going through the mud, uh, one side gets, slows down more than the other, so it turns the corner. Here, the side that hits the barrier, that gets slowed down so it turns more than the bit that is next to it. So that's diffraction for you. So I've just changed the bar dipper just for a point dipper now and this one is just a demonstration to show you that waves go in all directions. Okay, Why, where does the term radiation come from? It means anything that goes out radially. So waves are radiation because they go out from a point in all different directions. That's always the case. If it comes from a single source, it's going to go in all different directions. This is like sound waves, this is how come you can hear me if my back is turned. The waves are going up in all different directions. And probably this is like chucking a stone into a pond. They, they go out in full circles. So this last one, this double dipper, is only really relevant to you if you're doing triple science or if you're doing A-level. There's two dippers there, so we're going to have two circular patterns overlapping and you can see the effect of that the diffraction pattern and i've got a video where i go through this just increase the frequency until you see it really well um, aha and i do the analysis using light and i actually show you what's called young's um, double slit interference patterns and now here you can see that there are points where there's actually no wave at all See those lines where there's no disturbance on the water? And that is because two waves there are meeting at antiphase. They're meeting uh, 180 degrees out of phase. They're, they're meeting, troughs are meeting peaks, always. Anyone, any of those points there where there is no wave, troughs are always meeting peaks. And that means that there is zero energy transfer. There's just still water there. Um, and in between those, you can see the areas of maximum energy transfer, where actually troughs are always meeting troughs and peaks are always meet, meeting peaks. And that means they constructively superpose on one another. And they actually have twice the displacement. Um, I think that's absolutely fascinating there. Now, this is modeling a situation where if you had laser light coming together to two uh, diffraction gaps, two gaps here, then they, this one, this side diffracts into semicircles, this one diffracts into semicircles, and they overlap, producing this interference pattern here, where you're getting the superposition, and you're getting a standing wave across here, where you've got uh, alternately maximums and zeros, maximums and zeros, all the way along, okay? It is how come that light and light can meet and produce darkness, or a wave and a wave can meet and produce still water, or no displacement. That's all there is to the wave generator, the ripple tank. Thank you for watching Gorilla Physics. Please do like, share and subscribe. That really helps me be more useful to more people. Also, please go ahead and check out Gorilla Chemistry and Gorilla Biology. You can expect the same sorts of things, past paper questions and videos to help you understand topics. Thanks once again for watching.